Welcome everybody, Greg here with Laser Bear Industries showing how to assemble the Wii Multi-Out adapter that we are now offering on our site. It's compatible with the GC Dual mod for the GameCube, the N64 Digital, and I believe the N64 Advance from Bordy. So in your kit you'll get a top shell, a bottom shell, a screw, nut, the multi-out for the GameCube and a board that supports the multi-out from the Wii. For this, the first thing that you kind of want to do is on these prints there is just one layer of plastic here um, and that's just to make sure that this prints nice and neat especially with as small as this part is. And all you want to do is go in with like a craft knife just do a quick spin through it. After you've done that now the hole is open and ready to have everything come through it. And then what you'll want to do is take your screw, or your, sorry, your nut, install it into that space. It might try to fight you a little bit, and if it does, you can take your screw and put it through your board, run it, run the nut all the way up to where it's touching the plastic just like so and you're just going to take make sure that it's still lined up and you're going to use the screw to help you pull it through and then you just want to loosen that out so now that we have the nut embedded into the base all we're going to do is we're going to take our multi out. The ridge at the top needs to be faced up, the bottom with the nut in it down. And you're just going to set this into here. It should, sorry, have it on the wrong side. Set it into this side. You can tell that it goes here because both sides of this are angled, whereas only one side of this side is angled. Otherwise, it's just straight up. And it sits just nice and neat in there. And now, on this board, it says top, and it has Citrus 3000 PSI on the bottom. Bottom goes to the bottom, top faces up. You're going to put your screw through again, and you're just going to run that screw all the way in until it's nice and snug. It doesn't have to be super tight or anything, because we do have to take it out again. And then what you want to do is straighten out the board. And the easiest way to see if it's straight is to look at the gap here. Now if one side's gap is bigger than the other that's not a big deal, it's not going to cause any issues. You just want that gap to be nice and straight. You don't want it to look like it's you know, angled off a lot because you want this to be as uniform as you can get it. Once you have it like that, I like to just take the top, set the excess screw length through the hole in the top just so that you have something to work with, and then I just pinch this like so. Then I'm going to go through and press these tabs down with the screwdriver that I'm using. You just want them to be nice and flat. It might actually be easier if you go kind of like this and push them in. And just go through and do it with all of the pins. You want them just to sit as close to the PCB as you can. In my case, they're either touching or within a millimeter. Once you've got that, you're just gonna make sure they're nice and flat. And you're come through and you're going to hit all of them with some solder. So I just set the soldering iron right on top of the pin and the pad. And I let a little bit flow in there. Now it's one you know, from bees. It makes it a little bit easier to go through them. I also like to just tack the other half of it. Just like so. And then just go through. Tack all of these pads down. Once you've gotten this side done, 
you're just going to take your screw out I set the bottom aside, set the sewer screw aside. Now you've got the little cutout in the top. You just want to set your top half in just like so. You go through and you do the same thing with the pads on this side. Which I can probably zoom in a little bit more. Kind of show you that process. So all I'm doing is just kind of setting on top of the pad and then putting pressure to push the pad towards the inside. It gives it a little bit of spring action so that center part is touching the pad itself. And that's all we really want. We want there to be contact with the pad to get it to the signal through. And then we'll just go through and solder again. Make sure I keep everything in frame. Hit my fingers with solder. After you're all done, all of your pads are soldered nice and cleanly into there. We're just going to assemble everything. So you can just leave it in the top shell, take your bottom shell, it snaps right on. Well, it doesn't snap, but pretty close. And then you're gonna take your screw through the center, give it a good tighten. And now you have a completed adapter. Thanks. Hopefully this was informative, helps you get yours built. These are pretty handy. I like using my Wii component cable with my N64 Digital, um, just so that I can tie everything in with my existing component uh, infrastructure. Thanks and have a wonderful day.